How does the difference between point zero 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 three nine eight and point zero 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 three nine eight cause one to have red eyes after swimming? To answer this, we first need a way of dealing with rather small numbers, or in some cases, extremely large numbers. This leads us to the concept of logarithms. Well, what are logarithms? Let's take the base number b and raise it to a power p, like two to the third power, and have it equal a number n. We get an exponential equation, b raised to the p power equals n. In our example, that'd be 2 raised to the third power equals 8. The exponent p is said to be the logarithm of the number n. Most of the time, this will be written log base b of the number equals p the power. This is starting to sound a bit confusing with all the variables. So let's show this with an example. What is the value of log base 10 of 10,000? The same question could be asked using exponents. 10 raised to what power is 10,000? Well, 10 to the fourth is 10,000. So log base 10 to 10,000 must equal 4. This example can also be completed very simply on a scientific calculator. Log base 10 is used so frequently in the sciences that it has the honor of having its own button on most calculators. If the calculator will figure out logs for me, why study them? Just a quick reminder, the log button only computes logarithms of base 10. What if you want to go into computer science and need to understand base 2? So what is log base 2 of 64? In other words, 2 raised to what power is 64? Well, use your fingers. 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. So log base 2 of 64 must equal 6. So what does this have to do with my eyes turning red in some swimming pools and not others? Well, it leads us into an interesting use of logarithms in chemistry finding the pH of water samples. pH tells us how acidic or basic a sample is and can be calculated with the formula pH equals negative log base 10 of the hydrogen ion concentration, or H plus. We can find the pH of water samples with hydrogen ion concentration of 0.00000000398 and 0.00000000398 quickly on a calculator. Punch negative log of each of those numbers, and you'll see the pH is R7.4 and 8.4. Since the tears in our eyes have a pH of about 7.4, the H plus concentration of 0 0.70398 will feel nice on your eyes, but the pH of 8.4 will make you feel itchy and red. It's easy to remember logarithms, log base B of some number N equals P by repeating the base raised to what power equals the number. The base raised to what power equals the number. The base raised to what power equals the number? So now we know logarithms are very powerful when dealing with extremely small or large numbers. Logarithms can even be used instead of eye drops after swimming. We can solve many types of equations using the algebra that you've learned over the past couple of years. For example, 3x plus 7 equals minus 2. We would solve for x by adding negative 7 to both sides and then dividing by 3. x squared plus 3x equals minus 2. Add 2 to both sides, then factor to get the value of x, actually two values of x since this is a quadratic. 5 times the square root of x equals 45. We would divide by 5 and then But what about if x is in the exponent? 3 to the x equals 81. What value of x makes this true? Well, here's an example. A single bacteria cell divides into two cells once per minute. How long does it take to become over one million cells? In other words, what we're trying to do is to find the value of x that makes two to the x equal to one million. Well, we can use logarithms to solve this problem. Here we have the exponential form, two to the x equals one million. And we're going to rewrite that as log to the base 2 of 1 million equals x. 2 is the base. That's the number we're raising to the power. x is the exponent. That's the number we're trying to find. And 1 million is the number, it's the answer to the exponential and becomes the input into the log. 
So we put log to the base 2 of 1 million into the calculator, and we find out that it takes about 20 minutes, 20 times doubling, for one cell to become over 1 million. We can define the logarithm then by comparing the exponential form and the log form as shown here. Notice how the y's, the b's, and the x's line up between these two. So logarithms solve exponentials by giving you the value of the exponent x if you know the base b and what we'll call the answer y. There are properties of logarithms that can help break complex problems down into simpler ones. For example, multiplication can become addition by using the product rule. If you take the log of two numbers that are multiplied, it becomes the log of each of those numbers added together. Division becomes subtraction. If you take the log of a quotient, it becomes the difference of the logs of the numbers. And perhaps the most important and useful one, exponentiation becomes multiplication. That means that taking the log of a number raised to a power equals the power times the log of the number. Notice now that we've gotten that x out of the exponent and into a multiplication problem, which we know how to deal with. There's a couple more properties that you should be familiar with. The log to the base b of b, so any number b, log to the base b of b is always equal to 1. And the log to the base b, any number b, of 1 is always equal to 0. Let's look at a couple of examples. We take these two numbers, these two logarithmic numbers, and add them together. We can combine the x and the 4 by using the multiplication property. Here we have two numbers, two logs that are being subtracted, and we can convert that into a quotient. And finally, we have log to the base 10 of 5 to the x power becoming x times log to the base 10 of 5. We can use this last example to help us to solve exponentials to any base by using just log 10. Most scientific calculators have a log button, but it's only for log to the base 10. So how could you solve something like 45 to the x equals 4,100,625? We're going to use the property that log to the base b of y to the x equals x times log to the base b of y. We'll take the log to the base 10 of both sides, giving us log of 45 to the x equals log of the 4 million number. By taking the log of a number to raised to a power, we can put that power x out front, as we've done here. And now all we need to do to solve for x is to divide log of the 4 million number divided by log of 45. So we really didn't need to have a log to the base 45 button after all. We could solve this logarithm using just the log 10 key. Let's take a quick look at the graph of the log function. This is log to the base 2. We have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. The entire graph lies to the right of this asymptote. That means that the domain is all values of x greater than 0. That also means we can't take the log of 0, nor can we take the log of a negative number. Now the range is all real numbers. We're looking at a very small part of the graph, but you can imagine that near x equals 0, that graph is going to go straight down to negative infinity. And off to the right, even though it appears to be leveling off, it still continues to rise the farther we go to the right. And the graphs of logarithms to other bases will look similar to this. They'll just look like they're scaled up or down a little bit. If we start with the parent function log to the base b of x, we can transform this as needed by doing one or more of the following things. If we change the sign out front, we're going to flip the graph over the x-axis. If there's no negative sign in front, then there's no change to the graph. It looks like the graph on the previous page. The value of a out in front of the log is going to stretch the graph if a is greater than 1 or compress it if a is between 0 and 1, and this stretches in the vertical direction. The value of h, number added or subtracted to x, is going to shift the graph horizontally by h units. Remember, it's kind of backwards, so x plus h shifts to the left, x minus h shifts to the right. And then finally, the value of k added to the entire thing is going to shift the graph up by k units if you're adding, or subtracting is going to move the graph down by k units. Let's summarize real quick. 
Logs are intended to solve exponentials. We can change an exponential form with x in the exponent into a log form where we can put the numbers into the calculator and find that exponent. There are properties we need to remember. Log of a product is the sum of the logs. Log of a quotient is the difference of the logs. And log of a number to a power is the power times the log of the number. We also remember that log to the base b of the base is always 1, and log to the base b of 1 is always 0. The domain of the log function is x greater than 0. We have an asymptote, vertical asymptote, at x equals 0. The range is all real numbers, and the transformations of the function include reflection with a sign out front, vertical stretch and compression with a number a multiplying the log, horizontal shift by h units by adding or subtracting to the number x, and a vertical shift by adding a number k to the entire expression.